Hello and welcome back once again to the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast. This is episode 37. John and Wendy talk to Jeff Pokowski. I'm your host, John. And I'm Wendy. How are you tonight, John? I'm well. I'm well. We were talking about what are we going to talk about? Small <laughs> talk, because you know, as as most of you that are you know, avid listeners know, we don't talk about the weather anymore. Right. Uh, we are uh, we're pulling back the curtain a bit. We're recording in mid September while I sit here and wait for a hurricane that may or may not hit. But uh, yes. I wanted to mention a the ending of a podcast that is not HR related. It's a show called The Crab Feast. And The Crab Feast is uh, two comedians in L.A., uh, Jay Larson and Ryan Sickler, who have started, they, they started the show about six and a half years ago. So they've, they've put out 350 episodes or so at this point, close to it. And uh, it's a storytelling show. And it's one that I'm a huge fan of. It really is one of those shows, you know, people ask me, what do I listen to? It's, it's always, it's first thing I listen to on Tuesday mornings is the crab feast. And it has been for gosh, six years. I mean, I started early on with them. So bummed to see him leaving. Those of you that listen or want to try a, a different podcast, if you want to hear again, two comedians talking to other comedians that you may not have heard of just storytelling. And some of the stories are absolutely unbelievable. They, they're just hysterical and really, really well done. So they're wrapping up in December. So they gave, they gave the listeners 10 or what, 10, 12 weeks notice. They wow. released an episode. Yeah. They released a special episode on a Thursday to say, Hey, we're letting everybody know we're in, in the show. <laughs> and they're actually letting a, they're letting listeners tweet them and email and write in who they want. in that last 10 episode, which is pretty cool. I think they're trying to get, you know, they said was many of the people that we can get that, either repeat guests or guests we've never had, but letting the listeners help choose those 10 people, which I thought was pretty neat too. So anyway, very cool. because we didn't have anything else to talk about, I've, I've been thinking a lot about the Crab Feast last week or so since they made the announcement. Again, if you're looking for something different, you want a, a couple laughs or more than a couple laughs, and, and two guys that, again, can can weave stories and, and then let other storytellers come in and, and weave stories too, you ought to check it out. Enough about podcast ending. We've yeah. got a great podcast starting. Uh, I don't want to take any more time. Wendy, I'll let you make the introduction and we'll get going. Sure. Super excited to welcome Jeff tonight. Got a chance to meet Jeff at SHRM 18. We have sensing a theme of some of our uh, recent podcasts, but that's great. Uh, love being able to talk with all these folks more and learn more about them. Jeff is a title and compensation analyst with the University of Wisconsin-Madison Office of Human Resources. He's worked in both public and private sector human resources for over 15 years and has been active with SHRM at the national, state, and local chapters since 2003. Before he joined HR, he worked in in a number of management and executive level positions within the financial services industry. And he's also worked for three years in the Wisconsin State Legislature. He is a certified professional in HR and SHRM certified professional as well. He received his undergraduate degree from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and earned his master's in HR management from the Keller Graduate School of Management and completed continuing education coursework at Purdue University and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So Jeff obviously loves education, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Jeff currently resides in South Central Wisconsin with his wife, Julie, and their rescued collie mix, Brandy. Jeff, welcome to the show. And our first question is, what's in your glass tonight? Well, first of all, I want to thank you. Uh, this is a, a great opportunity, and I'm glad to be here. And as far as what's in my glass, well, at the very moment, it is actually empty, but I can tell you what was in it 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I uh, It was filled with a wonderful uh, drink called Kentucky Bourbon Vanilla Cream Ale. Oh. If you haven't had that, it's basically cream soda meets malt beverage. And oh, interesting. Went down very well, and that's why my glass is empty. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you're allowed to have another, Jeff, at least on this yes. show. We, we, I, I, we certainly I, are, are amenable to that. <laughs> oh, I, I, and I, I, will take, I will take you up on that, so. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Well, I, I, I should have said before we made your introduction – uh, yeah, I think you and I are indeed brothers from different mothers in, in many ways, not just in HR, but a lot of other things we'll be talking about later. But I am curious, how did you get started on that career path in HR? Like most people, there, there's a story. And mine starts off with, uh, again, my first job out of college was uh, in financial services operations, as you mentioned. I worked, uh, I worked in the financial investment services arena for some time. 
moved up the corporate ladder quickly through various various positions and roles. And what I was finding, there was this common theme, and it was that I enjoyed human resources, just the various responsibilities, working with our corporate human resources staff. In my positions, I did a lot of staffing, a lot of workforce relations. And um, so I, I decided, basically decided to make a career change about 15 years ago. And I decided I was going to step out of the financial world and go full-time into human resources. So what that required me to do at the time was I went to school full-time to, uh, to co- complete a graduate degree, studied and passed the, uh, the PHR exam, and then I found, okay, what's next? Got my start as a uh, recruiter at several staffing agencies. So my first position was for a full-service staffing agency, and I always like to share this story, and yes, it is a true story. On my first day, uh, here I am, human resources professional. My first task was I was handed a specimen cup and a rubber glove and said, Here, here's, your, here's your first candidate. Um, yes. Walk him to the men's room. For his I remember test. those days. Yes. And that's and it and, and I'm still in HR, so I mean it's, it didn't scare me. I don't know it if that was the purpose. You. Oh my gosh. Did, did but, you get uh, e-cup money back then? Well, you know, it's it was I, luckily it was it, it wasn't something I had to do f- frequently, but that was my first day and uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I used to get three dollars a cup. <laughs> oh no, I, I, I didn't get any I didn't get any kickbacks on that, but I I, I should have thought of it at the time actually. That was yeah. I oh well yep. He cut money. Well, <laughs> oh my goodness. But um, but from there, uh, so yeah, so my, in, in the in the uh, private sector, I worked for a couple of different staffing agencies. Again, the full service one was my first position, and then I did a little bit of remote recruiting, uh, working for a company that uh, did outsourced recruiting for a number of uh, companies across the country. So that was very interesting. It was um, it was true recruiting. It, I mean, it was cold calling, sourcing, interviewing people from across the country, and it, it was a lot of fun. But then I blame my wife. She uh, relocated us from uh, eastern Wisconsin to, uh, to Madison, Wisconsin, so I had to leave that position. So that's actually where I took a little bit of time off. And uh, so, so the position I got when I, we moved out here was actually uh, working as a policy advisor in our, our state assembly or state legislature. But it was the good part about that was it was still HR-focused, and I got to work on human resources legislation, worked with our, our legislative labor committees, learned all about how the state interacts with human resources in our state. And, and then from there, I started uh, what's currently a, a 12 plus year career uh, with the state of Wisconsin, working for both the state um, as well as the University of Wisconsin. And that's where I presently work today. Very cool. So Jeff told a great story about how you got into HR, but I'm going to guess that the P cup's not your favorite part. What has been your favorite part of working in HR? Uh, well, that was a that, that was a good observation, Wendy. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we all get asked this a lot, and I, I just I find it hard to put in words sometimes. Um, I mean, so so it, it seems pretty simple, but I I enjoy the pace, I enjoy the the people interaction, and just the overall variety. As all of us in HR know, uh, there's never a dull moment. I, I found that working in HR, my days go by very quickly. Uh, you start off in the morning with a to-do list. And by the end of the day, you've done a million things and that to-do list is still there. And, uh, but the one thing is, um, one thing I really like about HR is I found that each and every day I leave with some sense of accomplishment. I've helped someone, I've, I've accomplished something, and I can't say the same thing about other industries that I've worked in. So that's, that's kind of re- really what, what I like about it and why, why I continue to work in this profession. Jeff, you've had a chance and you talked a little bit about, about, about your background that you've worked in the public and private sector both. What challenges do you see, especially now in higher education, and how do you see them being addressed from an HR perspective? Well, I have to say, working uh, working in higher education has been quite an experience. I've been in higher education now for just about eight years, and um, obviously, it's, uh, it, working for a state university, it's still part of the public sector, but higher education just adds a whole other element to it. The biggest difference that I find between the private and public sector is the pace. Things move so much slower in the public sector, partic- particularly in higher ed. Yes. Um, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, but, but, but the one thing I will say, we, we do still also face a lot of the same HR challenges that the public sector does. Uh, I mean, we face the same talent shortages. We face the challenges of implementing new HR technology, employee engagement, retention, all, all those same issues. But the one thing that, 
I don't want to say complicate, but I think adds another element to higher education is the concept of shared governance. And it, it's something that exists in higher education, and it really depends to what extent, depending on the, on the type of campus you are. Um, I can tell you the University of Wisconsin-Madison loves shared governance, and we have it at all levels uh, of, of the university. And that's basically just the way the university is managed, rather than the, the kind of the corporate top-down that you, you may be used to in the, in the uh, private sector. With shared governance, um, I'll give you an example. Um, let's say there's a simple, I'll say simple HR policy with air quotes that we want to draft and put into place. So we would draft that policy. Uh, we vet it by our internal management. But before we can do anything with it, we have to sh present it to shared governance. And on our campus, shared governance includes our faculty, our academic staff, our classified or civil service staff, and our students. So depending on the policy, you may have four different groups kind of giving a, a swing at the cat, if you will, and, and look at this policy. And by the time it comes back, you have a lot of feedback and recommendations. And, and as you can imagine, those groups meet periodically, so you're on their schedule. So a, a, a simple policy can sometimes take a year to, to, to implement. And that's, that's taken some adjustment working in higher education. And Wendy, I'm sure you, working in higher ed as well, you're probably very familiar with that and can hopefully sympathize with me. And <laughs> I, I was thinking you were being optimistic at a year and a half for a policy ah. to go into effect. Oh, well, so. I, I, you, I, I did say simple. <laughs> you did. You did say simple, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we, can t we could tell stories. <laughs> but I, I like to describe it like an onion. It's like there's so many layers upon layers upon layers. And, yeah, it, it, when, I, when I describe basically when I describe higher education, human resources to someone outside, I, I, I take slice an onion and each one of those layers is something that we have to go through. And that's the best way I can describe it. And I get, onions make you cry as well. So I'm not sure if that's relatable. <laughs> also, but what you all that I was going to ask was the onion stinky, but yeah, well, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> oh, definitely. You're very involved in the legislative wing of SHRM, which is very awesome. So what led you to get involved in that way? And what's your most memorable experience serving in that capacity? Well, let's see. So I became involved with uh, the SHRM Advocacy Aid Team, I think around 2011. And I believe that's when kind of it was in its infancy and just kind of kind of coming to fruition at that point. I didn't realize what I was volunteering for, but uh, I volunteered to be an advocacy captain. And the way that works within the, the SHRM advocacy team is their goal was to have one advocacy captain for each congressional district uh, in the country. So that's 435 congressional districts. And the idea was SHRM would have a voice to meet with the, the member of Congress uh, to kind of share and advocate for SHRM's, uh, SHRM's policies and procedures. And uh, so it's something I volunteered for. And uh, I, I found it fascinating and I still continue to as I continue in that role. Prior to that role, uh, I was involved at the local SHRM chapter level um, in government affairs. Um, what we did was made sure that our, our chapter members were updated on the, on the legislation. The concept of, of legislation and human resources, sometimes it takes a while to explain. A, a, a lot of HR individuals may grumble about the different policies and procedures that we all, are, uh, that we all have to adhere to, the laws and so on. Um, and I try to tell them that they actually have a voice. And, and in many cases, elected officials want to hear from us. I, I like to give them the benefit of the doubt and hope they're not making stupid laws on purpose. But uh, I think we can, we as professionals can help them maybe craft better laws. And I, and I feel that's, that's a role that, uh, that Sherman is trying to do on, on behalf of our profession. So something I've been, like I said, I've been involved with and have, have gotten more and more involved over the years. I don't necessarily agree with every position they have, and, and, that's, and that's the case that you'll have as well. I tell those that advocate that it's something that you as an individual or you on behalf of your employer need to believe in and support. And if you don't, there are certainly other issues as well. So it's uh, definitely a personal choice. Um, as far as the most memorable experience, um, that was prob probably take place in 27. I was very active that year. During that calendar year, I was able to advocate for SHRM at the Wisconsin State Capitol, twice on Capitol Hill in D.C., uh, at the uh, SHRM Employment Law and Legislative Conference, as well as their um, Volunteer Leadership Summit. And then also uh, had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with uh, the Speaker of the House to talk about uh, our workforce, SHRM's workforce legislation. So it was a busy year. 2018 hasn't been as busy, but I look to get hopefully more involved uh, next year as well. I am vying for a, a legislative position at our Wisconsin State Council, and if, if that 
Again, if that happens, it's going to keep me very busy uh, working with chapters across the state on a, on a lot of important SHRM uh, legislative and advocacy issues. Very cool. Can't think of a better person to do it. So Wisconsin right. SHRM people, listen up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this guy in that job, make it happen. So Jeff, you have a blog, HR Sushi Bar, which I just fascinates me. <laughs> like, How did you come up with the title? What kind of response have you gotten? And of course, I've got to ask, what's your favorite type of sushi? Ah, uh, the sushi bar. <laughs> well, anyone who has looked at my blog, HR Sushi Bar, you, you will definitely know it's still a work in progress. I guess how it came about, as you had mentioned in the introduction, um, I attended the uh, Sherm Annual Conference in Chicago. That was actually my first annual conference. And one of the best experiences I had was reading all of the various posts from the Sherm bloggers, of which both of you are part of and so many other people, uh, you know, leading up to and during the conference. And I guess I just have to say I was inspired by it. And I just wondered, I thought about blogging for years and thought, why not? Let's give it a try. So I thought I might be able to contribute contribute something to the HR profession that way. So uh, that's why I created it. As far as the title, I wanted to come up with something catchy. I don't know if it is or not, but I, when I tell people, they they remember it. So I guess, that, you know, that's half the battle. <laughs> that's right. So I'm not sure if it's creative or just, or just quirky, but how it came about <laughs> was I was actually sitting with my wife uh, eating sushi at one of our local sushi restaurants. And I was just kind of, it just kind of hit me. And to answer your question, John, I like all kinds of sushi, but probably spicy tuna would be my, my go-to my go-to rolls. I love uh, spicy tuna. And so I came up with the idea. And if you go to the blog and look at the header on the top, that's actually the plate of spicy tuna that I ate when I came up with the, uh, the idea. So all <laughs> comes together, right? I <laughs> right. love it. So, Jeff, it is now time for everyone's favorite part of our show, the Half Hour Question Connection. Do you remember how you first connected with us? Well, I know this, this is a question you ask all of your guests, and I'm guessing just about everyone has a similar answer, uh, and it includes the name Steve Brown. So, <laughs> uh, Steve Brown, and first of all, to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, I'm thinking of, of pitching a business proposal to Steve. I think he should, he should come up with hrmatch.com, because I think he's created so many <laughs> HR relationships. I mean, I, I think we're sitting on a, he's sitting on a gold mine here, so I'm going to pitch that to him next time I see it, because just about everyone that I've met uh, I mean, it's, you know, you talk about the, the, the levels of Kevin Bacon. I mean, everyone, you bring up Steve Brown and everyone has met him, talked to him. And I, I that's, that's how I connected to, to all of you. What I did was I connected with Steve and it's only been about a year, which I'm, I'm just amazed at. So sometime in 2017, I connected with Steve and then I actually met him at the uh, Volunteer Leader Summit last year in D.C., he gave me his pitch. He's like, you need to get involved. You need to get on social media. You, you need to follow these things called Twitter chats, which I had no idea what they were. And started giving me these hashtags like hashtag HR tribe, hashtag HR social hour, hashtag next chat. So I started following them. And I think that's eventually how I connected to both of you. Probably on one of those, I think I was invited to an HR social hour and I found that just to be a great time every one Sunday a month. And, and then I finally met both of you at the, at the conference, I think at our Sherm North central networking event, if, if I remember correctly. Yes. Cause you yep. all are awesome. And you let people hang out <laughs> are members. And I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I'm a well, big fan. We, 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 we welcome everyone. So that's, 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 it's, you know, it's that Midwest nice. Exactly. And it goes back to that. Uh, yeah. I, it goes back to Steve Brown and the match thing too. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to throw his name around, but uh, <laughs> two degrees of Steve. <laughs> having said that though, Jeff, talk to us a little bit about networking's help in your career and what's been a really effective way or tool for you when it comes to networking. Well, I found, I, I've been, net, I found networking to be valuable pretty much throughout my career, both outside of HR and, but now more so in human resources it's just such a great way to, to learn, connect, share, support each other. I mean, we've all had great conversations. We've, we've learned so much about each other's lives and, and, and just found so many common bonds and connections. And just, just some, some examples that I want to share that I know you're familiar with. I mean, anyone that follows me on Twitter is, is fully aware of my, my mutual love of puns with my good friend, Dr. Melanie Peacock. <laughs> I know we drive people crazy, but it's just something, I don't know where it came from, but we cannot respond to a, a tweet without a, without a pun. And it's just this something we do and it's just, it's just been kind of fun. And again, finally meeting each other at uh, Sherm National. I've also had some great connections um, and on a number of issues with our mutual friend uh, who we, we know uh, lovingly as the HR shenanigator. Uh, that would be Kyra, <laughs> Kyra Makovic. 
Uh, we've, we've touched on a few issues. And then while we're recording this, actually this weekend, I, will, I, I organized an, an in-person HR tribe meeting for um, some of our Wisconsin and Illinois folks, again, that I met at, uh, at Sherman Chicago. So Mary Williams, who I know you've, you've interviewed previously, and Paul Lalonde, who I also met, they're both in the Chicago area. So There's going to be about five or six of us getting together in real life, if you will. And uh, what better place to meet than in Milwaukee at a microbrewery? So we're going to do a brewery. Beautiful. Tour. Oh, and that sounds it up awesome. With some, some real HR networking after we've toured a little bit and probably sampled as well. So I mean, that's just a, one example, uh, just a real life example of how networking, you know, it starts off in social media, but it's just opened up for me personally, a, just a whole new world of colleagues, friends from around the world. And we all work in HR, obviously, but uh, it's just interesting. We, you know, we learn a little bit about our, our, all of our individual lives, about our families, communities. John and I, I mean, that's how we connected on our shared love for I'm going to say it, John, drum corps music and <laughs> Maynard Ferguson and, just, you know, the fact that uh, just something like that is just a, just another bond that, that you have with someone that, again, I wouldn't have experienced had I not, uh, had I not networked and, and, again, go back to meeting Steve Brown. So, Awesome. Well, other than Steve Brown, who else do you read or follow for HR Insights? Well, yeah, Steve's at the top of my list. I also follow... Uh, uh, again, from the legislative side, I, I like to read everything that uh, Lewis Lessig from the Garden State uh, Sherm puts out. He's a he's an employment lawyer. Uh, he puts out some great things. Obviously, follow the Sherm Advocacy Action Center. Uh, there's a lot of great people that work on the government affairs team there. Mike Aiken, Lisa Horn. I follow. I read a lot of their information as they put it out. Recruitment has a big uh, been a big part of my career as well in human resources. So it's a little old school, but I look up. I, I read a lot of. Uh, the postings from, from Lou Adler on, uh, on LinkedIn. I, it, again, LinkedIn is, I, I just read everything voraciously on, on LinkedIn, all the tweets, again, following the hashtags that I mentioned earlier, and then, and then just the various things that uh, Sherm puts out on a daily basis. I'm, I'm probably subscribed to all of their newsletters, and the biggest problem is not having enough time to read all this great information, but I just try to catch as much as I can. That is true. Jeff, how do you enjoy giving back to the HR community? Well, let's see. I, I, one thing I love to do, and it, it's, it's, I'm in a great, uh, great place for it, is I love mentoring students. So whenever I have an opportunity to meet with HR students and kind of tell them about the real life and why I got into it and tell them my story. And I tell them, it, mine is just one story. Everyone has their own. You know, looking back, it would have been great had I decided in college that, that I wanted to be in HR, but I still feel that the experience I had has, you know, has helped to make owned me out as an HR professional, but uh, that's one way to give back is just sh sharing with, uh, with students, just reaching out and uh, reaching out to other professionals is one way to give back as well. I've been involved in uh, Sherm volunteer leadership for some time now. It's, it's been a great experience to, to volunteer. And as I mentioned, I've been on the, uh, our local chapter board for a number of years and I'm hoping Hoping in 2019 uh, we'll be able to give back at our Sherm uh, State Council here in Wisconsin as well. One other thing that, that I want to mention is I, I find a lot of fulfillment in uh, supporting the Sherm Foundation. I really didn't know a lot about them until uh, the Sherm Annual Conference, but, but when I learned about all the great things that they're doing, not just in scholarships, but uh, supporting veterans and all of their different initiatives, I was, again, went to, went to a foundation lunch and heard so many stories, met some people. Um, and I just recently um, contacted them and said, how can I help you? And I made a commitment to join their leadership circle, to, which is going to help to provide scholarships and other support to, uh, to current and aspiring HR professionals. And that's just, an, just one small way that I, I'm hoping I can give back to our profession. So, Jeff, what's your favorite movie? This is a tough one. I just can't pick just one. So I'm, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, it would be a genre, and it's, it, it's kind of a lame one probably, but I love 80s comedies. <laughs> myself, but I mean, we'll start off with I mean, Blues Brothers, Stripes, Caddyshack, Trading Spaces, or Trading Places, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I mean, I can just if they if I'm flicking through cable and one of them comes on, I just I just have to stop. And, so I can't pick just one. Sorry. Those are awesome. <laughs> I, I you know I get to ask this question: favorite band or musician? <laughs> and you think you're going to get one? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say my all-time favorite artist is Frank Sinatra. I, he's, he's, some, he's someone my dad loved, and I just so I grew up listening to the Rat Pack, and, and along with that, just a lot of big band jazz. And, uh, and again, one of, another one of our common interests, John, is obviously Maynard Ferguson, Stan Kenton, and that whole era. I just, I just love big brass 
But then on the flip side, I'm also a big country music fan. I've seen Carrie Underwood, Brad Paisley, Miranda Lambert multiple times in concerts, which is kind of kind of different from the from the Sinatra. And and then as I already mentioned, um, I'm, I'm sure at some point we're going to do a future full hour podcast on on the love of, of DCI and drum corps. So I'll be looking forward to that, John. Yes. <laughs> Book it. How about a favorite TV show? That too. Uh, you're going to get multiple answers here. So. Um, th- as as this is fall right now, I, I, I of course have to say Green Bay Packers. Uh, <laughs> for, for, fortunate to get to at least one game up at Lambeau a year, but when I can't do that, it's it's I'm glued to that TV set uh, for three hours. That was uh, that was one of the agreements uh, in in my marriage that uh, um, there's three hours from uh, from September through hopefully through January that uh, I, I I'm devoted to uh, that team. So my wife is aware of that. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, as far as Regular TV shows, I like The Voice. It's just, it's kind of goofy, but uh, just that whole singing competition is something I love watching. Particularly if if you watch a whole season, you can see some individuals develop and, and get coached, and and that's kind of a fascinating show. I also like watching Pawn Stars on on the History Channel. It's just it's just kind of fascinating. I'm, I'm kind of a history buff, and just kind of the weird things that come into this little pawn shop in, in Las Vegas and hearing the stories. I like to I like to watch that as well. Well, Jeff, I could go on and on and on about shared connections. And to your point, yeah, we'll do a we'll do a drum corps show somewhere down the road. And what's great is one of the amazing things you talked about from a networking perspective is the number of people that I have met now over the last couple of years in particular that are fans of the activity and fans of these other musicians like that. So yeah, we'll we'll do it. But having said that, you're not watching eighties movies, you're not listening to Sinatra, you're not watching the shows that you're a fan of. What else do you like to do outside of work? Well, I really like to, I mean, like I said, work is great. I love HR, but then uh, the weekend, it's, it's, it's time to disconnect and, and, and do something fun. So my wife and I do a lot of day trips. Um, again, we're located here in Wisconsin, and we'll just, and, and this Saturday is a perfect example. We just kind of go online, do a radius of 100, 100 miles and say, okay, what do you want to do today? And we'll just, we'll just do a day trip. Um, so we just love travel in general. Um, when we're doing our, bait, our day trip, it's usually focused on, finding a new barbecue place and a new microbrewery and they usually go hand in hand. And I have to say we've done pretty well this year. We've, we've discovered a lot of little hole in the walls and Wisconsin and Northern Illinois uh, for both of those. So we do a lot of that. Um, so just travel in general. So then bigger trips as well. Uh, we love to, we love to travel. We love cruising. That's something that we try to do once a year at least. Um, and the only other thing is both my wife and I are musicians. So we, uh, we both, we both play when we can. Um, I still play with a band occasionally and, uh, and on some occasions in church, we get to, uh, get to perform together. Nice. All right. Final question, Jeff, if you weren't practicing HR, what do you think you'd be doing professionally? <laughs> well, if I had the talent, um, I would be a musician. I've also thought about, uh, I, I toyed with it for a little bit before going into HR. I thought about going to law school and possibly being attorney. Glad I made the decision I did, nothing against attorneys, but uh, that's another possibility I could have been doing. My ultimate job, if I was not in HR, and this may come up, become a possibility in retirement, I would love to be a doggy daycare worker. <laughs> I love dogs, and uh, I grew up with do- I grew up with dogs. Um, we only have one dog now. Our, our uh, uh, we just lost a dog pretty recently, but uh, I just love dogs, and I would just love to have a, a herd of dog. And that's, that's kind of my that's kind of my retirement goal to have a little ranch in Texas with uh, free range dogs or something. I mean, that would be that would just be a fun time. Uh, I love that. That's that's my uh, oldest daughter's wish is to have a uh, a ranch where she raises dogs. There you go. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard the term "free range dogs" until tonight. I, like I think it. I made that up. I think I. Well, did. I think I think I'm going to put it in the show notes somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, I want to congratulate you. You survived the question connection, the conversation at large, and again, we can't thank you enough for coming on. Uh, it has been a joy, really, getting to know you, and I look forward to having conversations offline about a lot of these things that we are simpatico about. But for those listeners that aren't following you or not connected with you on social, what's the best way for them to, to find you to your blog and all that good stuff? Absolutely. Well, before I do that, again, I, I want to thank both you, uh, John and Wendy, so much for asking me. You've had so many fun and talented folks on your podcast, so many people that I've met and those that I haven't met. And, and I'm just honored to have been included uh, in your project. So again, you're, you're both providing such a great service to us. 
And so for that, I just want to sincerely thank you both. But uh, to connect with me, uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Definitely open the, open the connections on there. On Twitter, you can find me at, at Jeff Pally. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, I do have a blog, and it's uh, www.hrsushibar.com. We will have all that in the show notes. Wendy, what about you? What's the best way for the listeners to find you? Best way, as always, is Twitter. I am Wendell93. You can also find me on my blog, mydailyjourney.com. That is uh, daily is D as in dog, A-I-L-E-Y. You can also find me on LinkedIn or Instagram. Happy to connect there as well. And the fourth Sunday of each month, you will find me on Twitter at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time uh, as part of the HR Social Hour Twitter chat. How about you, John? You can always find me on Twitter. John, J-O-N, underscore Thurmond, T-H-U-R-M-O-N-D. Always happy to connect on LinkedIn. I ask if you would send a personal note. I really appreciate it. If you have a comment or question about the show or monthly chat, send us an email. That's hrsocialhourpodcast at gmail.com. That email address gets real lonely, folks. And so, again, send us notes. We, we appreciate them. And especially those of you that are our international listeners, we'll throw that out. Love to hear from you. And it's a great way to connect. You can always find us on Facebook if you search the HR Social Hour. You'll find the show at hrsocialhourpodcast.podbean.com. We're on iTunes, Podbean, Podchaser, HR Podcasters, Google Play, TuneIn, Spotify, Overcast, Jerry Mathers is the Beaver. We're everywhere, mm-hmm. people. And if you like what you hear, the, the greatest thing you can do to help us out is rate and review. It gives us more visibility and, again, helps us to continue to build the community. So, again, Jeff, we appreciate you being with us tonight. And for the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast, I'm John. And I'm Wendy. And as always, be sure to connect. Give back and network. Network. Take care, everyone. We'll see you soon. 